Jacksonville. This is Anna, aka Boondog of Bliss, occasional reseller and cat lover. It's been a while. I'm not even going to go into reasons why I haven't been making YouTube videos. Nothing, nothing uh, major has been happening. It's just once you stop making videos, you like realize how much time you have given yourself. And it's really hard to get back into the swing of things. I don't even know how long it's going to take me to put this video up and if it's ever going to make it. I've, since the last upload, I've made several videos which I never even <laughs> uploaded and then I like deleted too. It's just, uh, you guys can help me if you want by telling me, you know, kind of get your act together, make some more videos. You can try to inspire me. I just don't guarantee, I don't guarantee results ever, ever. You know me, I'm like, oh, a squirrel. Oh, and that's that. My attention span is that of a male gnat. I tell you, um, I latch on to projects and I fall into things. And next thing you know, it's like a few months later and I haven't touched this thing or that thing. and. But selling is one thing that I've been really consistent with for the last three years. So go figure. There's something I really enjoy about reselling. So anyway, um, today I wanted to show you some uh, video, not video, photo editing uh, tips. I've been talking about it a while ago and then I haven't gotten back to it. Uh, but I want to start, you know, if this is the only video made on this topic, don't give me a hard time. But in my mind right now, I'm starting a series on photography. <laughs> this is episode one. And it will um, talk about, uh, I want to talk about some basic photo editing uh, tips to bring a little bit more life using your phone. And because I have an iPhone, uh, this is a very iOS, iPhone uh, focused um focused episode, but if you have a different um, phone, I believe what I'm going to teach you will apply. As it might be found in a different place, the features I'm going to show you, but I think it'll still apply. So I want to just go over that and kind of short video to get things started, see if I can, if I can make it. Uh, but in my mind, so I have it planned out that I want to show you the photo stuff. Um, then I want to talk about light bulbs. I've done a lot of research on um, picking the best light bulbs for your photography if you're going to invest in, um, in some lighting. In another video, I want to talk about all the different lighting sets and see what, you know, what could work for you. And I'll talk to you about a different scale. If you have a really small budget, what to buy. And let's say you have a bigger budget, what would be a good, good thing to buy. I've been through, I believe, seven different lighting sets in the last three years. And I've, I have some recommendations and lessons learned. So I want to talk about that. Then I want to do an episode on actual lighting setup. Um, based on what I'm seeing, the area that needs opportunity is light placement and eliminating other lighting sources. So I want to talk about light, uh, uh, light placement. There's one little feature that I think a lot of people are missing out and if you introduce it, that'll be very helpful. I also want to talk about the different um, apps that are out there to help you with your photo editing. But today I'm just going to focus if you have nothing else, you have no lighting, no nothing, all you have, your, all you have um, is your iPhone. I want to show you how you can make your photos better. So let's get started. On, on the side here you will see the different pictures we're going to be working on. This actually was an example I posted on Instagram ages ago talking about does anyone need any help taking, taking an item that looks like this to like that or like that which is um, one where you remove, remove all the color all together and make it look like it's floating in the air or from that to that. 
Um, so I was just using that as an example. But I took, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I took 12 examples we can work on. We'll see how many we get for you guys might totally get what I'm talking about. So as you can see, like I try to make my photos pop as much as as much as possible and without sacrificing the color um, I, I there are certain apps that make the clothing uh, vibrant and I think the color um, may be represented incorrectly when you're using certain apps um, some of them are great, some of them are not, but I try to stay as true as I can to the color. And if I have multiple different shades of color in my listing, I do say, let's say, picture number one, four, and eight represent the best color of the item. Um, so, so with that, with that said, just a reminder, that's my new closet, closet name. Okay, so let's, let's take the first the first example and just get going oops so the way you edit obviously you go into edit you click on the circle with the little circles around it, a little sundial thingamajig the number one mistake people make is just using these feature as they are these features as they appear here right now so light and lightening it up and as you can see in this example, this is the neutral one. This is what it looks like. Look what lighting actually does. It darkens the background to make the shoes pop more. And that's not what I'm trying to get at. I'm trying to make the background wider and cleaner. So this, I know this frustrates a lot of people because they're like, I try to lighten up my picture and it doesn't work. This is not what you're supposed to be doing. What you should be doing is by taking the additional step of clicking here, right there, going into the um, different levels of, of the lighting scale changes, whatever. So you have brilliance, exposure, highlight, shadows, brightness, contrast, and black point. Don't be overwhelmed. I'm going to give you two primary ones you um, you can play around with without sacrificing the kind of the integrity of the color of the actual item and a third one that's a good one if you're working with a white background already okay however if you have time I want you to take one of your pictures and try to play around with the scale on 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 one picture so that, that you understand what the changes it does make. But for the purposes of this exercise, um, I'm just gonna show you the two I recommend and the third one as an option. So I just reverted back to the original format. This is the picture that, um, um, that it looks originally. And the first one always is brightness. Check the brightness by sliding the scale. So as you can see, writing it, it not only softens those shadows that are uh, created um, because of my light placement, it softened those shadows so they're not as, as hard, right? Then, because I want to make the background a little more crisper, I'm going to go back and do my second one, which is exposure. And we're going to make it lighter just like that. It further makes it nice and clean and crisp. Then as my third and optional one, I'm just gonna see what Brilliance does to this. Yeah. Yeah, it actually lightens the item even further, um, which like I said, it's an optional. You can, but you're totally fine without it. I'll, mm, maybe just a little bit, okay? And last, I am going to see what color does, if the color vibrancy is deepened, if it changes it too drastically, I'm not gonna use it, but I'm just gonna see if, it's, if, if, um, if it helps. It actually doesn't do much, so I am not going to be even messing 
with that integrity of the colors that are in there. So all we did was adjusted brightness and exposure and a little bit of brilliance. Done. I want to see if I can duplicate it so I can do a side by side. Hold on. Okay. So now we have the fixed one and then let me go back and revert that one to the, its original. Ever since I got my new iPhone, like pictures take forever to, I, I'm, I have something wrong, something set up incorrectly. So, okay. That one, that one, that one, that one. See, it looks nice and crisper already. Now, let me show you another shoe one. So let's follow the same process. First, we're gonna go into brightness, brighten it up a little bit. Then we're gonna go into exposure. We're gonna give it a little bit more. And what you're doing when you're adjusting exposure, keep an eye out on the colors of the item you're displaying. Cause you know this is going to be just by default, it's gonna whiten up and lighten up. But make sure you're watching what happens to your item. So as I'm watching it, I'm making sure it doesn't change colors, just lightens it up. And then as an option, I'm gonna see what Brilliance does. Brilliance actually helps eliminate the shadows a little bit. Yeah, it'll do. And that's that done. See, once again, let's duplicate and compare. Duplicate. And then go back and undo, revert to the original one. You can see the difference, can't you? Here to here. Well, from, from here to here. So hold on. From here to here. That's pretty good. Now, if we just did light, this is what would happen. Not much, right? It lightens up the shoe, but it doesn't do too much for the background. Okay, so now we did some shoes. Let's, let's do a piece of clothing. <clears throat> Attention, low battery. Oops, my battery is low. My computer talks to me. I'm going to revert to original so we can see the picture in its truest form. Here's the picture. Shadows, dark. You can see the shadows created here. And this is, this. all these pictures that I've taken here that you're looking at are um, using sunlight. There are no lamps involved. We'll deal with lamps later. So this is all just natural light coming from the right side. Uh, I only have one window in that room and this is just on a wall next to the window and this is what comes up naturally. You get these hard, um, hard shadows because you have direct sunlight coming in. So let's edit that baby. Edit. What happens if you just use the scale? Not much. Not much, ladies and gentlemen. The shadows are still there and not much is happening. So I'm putting it back. And once again, let's do brightness. Brightness brightens it up a little bit, right? Let's do exposure. I don't like it when you start, when it starts getting to a place when it gives off this glow so I'm only doing a little bit of exposure and brilliance. Just a little bit, okay? See, original, new, original, new. Not perfect, but much better. Much more pleasing to the eye. Done. Let's do, let's do a black. Um, I know black is like the worst color to work with when you're doing photography. And I took, 
I took a picture of this black um, jacket with my flashlight. So I force a flashlight and I feel doing taking a picture with a flashlight of a black item gives you much better uh, detail. But then this one I took without any flashlight. So you can see the, the background is, you know, a little darker. Um, I think it's still passable because you can make out the detail. Sometimes it just looks like a black blob um, in the middle of the picture. But, but anyway, so let's work on that one for first. Edit. Oh, let me go back. Did I make any changes? Okay. Edit. Light. Brightness. Let's do brightness first. There we go. It gives off a little little better thing. Then exposure. Well, you don't want to do too much because then your jacket begins to look a different color. So we're only going to do, excuse me, a little bit of exposure. And let's see what brilliance does. Not much. Not much. Okay. Now with black items, if you feel the brightness really took away from the black color of your item, um, such in this, it did a little bit, it kind of looks washed out, you have the option of doing uh, contrast. Contrast will darken your jacket back while leaving the white background as is. So that's what I'm going to do a little bit here. See what I mean? The background remains nice, clean, crisp, and white, but the jacket is now a little more true black than before. So. Much better, much better. Done. Now let's take a look at this jacket over here. Um, once again, I took that one with a flash. So I'm already pretty happy with the picture for the most part, but we are going to give it a little pop of brightness. Right there. Exposure. Oh, just a little bit. Let's see what Brilliance does. Not much. I'm not going to use Brilliance. It just lightens up the thing. And let me do a little bit of contrast. There we go. Darkens the jacket back up. Boom. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. So that's that. Let's see. Is there anything else that's kind of fun we can look at? Well, let's look at a light shirt. So this shirt, um, just a standard photo, no, no flash, um, with semi-direct light. Um, my window, once again, is on that side. Let's see what we can do with it. First, revert back to original. Okay, that's original. Light. Brightness. Ooh! See what I mean? It does not mess up the color too much, but it brightens it up. Then let's do exposure. You don't want to do too much. I think I did too much in my pictures, but uh, maybe that much. Let's see what Brilliance does. Nothing. Leave Brilliance as is. Done. There it is. Much better. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? So let's recap. Let's recap. So for those that have a photographic memory, I've been playing around with this app and I love it because I brainstorm all the time. I love brainstorming. This is a great brainstorming app. Anyway, if you have a photographic memory, Brightness, exposure, and brilliance. Avoid adjusting light only. Remember that. Repetition is key, so that's why I'm repeating this. For an adult brain, it takes seven times for an idea to stick. Maybe. I heard it's like 20-something for reals, but let's just pretend it's seven times. Um, so that's that. That's how you do it. Okay, so now a little bit about light bulbs. If, if you cannot use sunlight, and always sunlight, daylight, 
will be the is the best way to go when it comes to lighting but if that is not available especially now since we're entering the you know darker colder time of the year um, if you're gonna do if you're gonna invest in any lighting focus on the light bulbs not the fancy lighting setups and because you can buy a cheap lighting setup the thing that's the most imperative that you hone in on are the light bulbs. So with the studio lights, um, with the studio sets that you buy, you're generally going to get a light bulb that looks like this, one of the bigger ones. So this is like the miniature version. And let's see, doesn't have that much information on there, but I forget the all the specifications. Um, on there and they're fine I mean you know you can definitely do stuff with them but if you're gonna invest some money like I said invest in um, some LEDs this is the one I really like and I have two of those the third one 3.3.3 lighting studio setup is my favorite and I'll talk about that in the future but um, right now I only have two of those I gotta get one more and that's all I need is three of those, and I'm golden. Um, uh, and this is what they look like. They're, they have little thingy majiggies, little doodads. And um, I found these, and they're probably the least expensive out of the stuff that I was looking for. You might find better ones. If you found better ones, please put it put them in the description down below. I am always down for trying up new stuff. I'm like a perpetual forever shopper, and I always like to try stuff. I don't like it. I sit back. Oh, that Amazon thing now. I hope I don't get in trouble when I. Ah, ah, you guys heard about that? Like, like people that return a lot will get their account suspended. I don't know what's a lot. What the definition of a lot is? Hopefully. Not for someone like me that returns something every every few months or whatever, maybe once a month. I don't, you know. Okay, and here's what you're looking for. So as with any as with any light bulb, um, they're measured in they're classified in different ways. So um, energy efficiency, you know, so from A to G, A being the most efficient, G being the least efficient. Um, if you're going to invest in good light bulbs, make sure they're, you know, energy efficient. And because I'm going to be talking about LEDs being the best um, um, option for us, uh, LEDs are very, um, very energy efficient. The next measurement being the um, color temperature. So there's this uh, scale called the Calvin scale. Yeah, that's what it's called, Calvin scale. I'm going to insert a picture right here. And just to give you an example, sunset is around 2,500 um, on the Calvin scale. Daylight is around 5,500. And once you go towards the other end, it's kind of more bluish light. So when you're buying light bulbs, focus on the ones that give you the most truest daylight uh, um, measurement on the Calvin scale. So for example, the one I bought and the one I recommend, I believe is 5,000. Um, no, I'm sorry. It's more on the bluer side. I went more with the bluish. It's 6,000, but anything between, uh, 5,000 and 6,000 on the Calvin scale will give you a good, um, a good option. Now, this also helps because you know the the thing everyone says if you're going to use a lighting studio you got to make sure that you don't have any other competing lights coming in because it'll throw off um, uh, the lighting but if you get those LED lights with the lighting being so close to daylight you don't have to worry uh, about that as much because you're because they are so close to daylight that um, uh, you're not going to have all these different colors competing, right? After uh, the color, um, you want to look at the lumens. And lumens measures how much light is produced. And once again, I'll insert a little example here so you can visualize what I'm talking about. You, you want to make sure that you get something that has a pretty high lumens uh, measurement. So the one that I'm talking about is 3,500. There are some that have very little and 
it's like pointless to buy those light bulbs. They're great for a nightstand or whatever, not for product photography. So you want to get into the high uh, three to 4,000 uh, uh, lumens um, classification. Then you have watts. Watts, I really don't care about watts too much. It's um, the amount of energy used. I mean, I know I should, but when you when I, you know when you're talking about product photography, who cares, right? And sometimes there is a measurement um, uh, called a CRI, and it's like the color rendering index, color or something. Um, some, some light bulbs will not have that measurement available for you, but what it is, it's, it like measures how the light uh, closely reproduces the colors um, when it applies, when the light is applied to the item you're um, you're taking a picture of, how how true to its form it represents the colors, and that you know that's so important in product photography. So it's on a scale of one to a hundred. Hundred being the best, it has the truest colors being represented under this light, and then then it goes down, and if and I'll see if I have an example. I'll insert one here so you kind of understand. You want to be a hundred. Obviously, I think these ones are between eighty and ninety, which is which is pretty good. But if you find something that's like fifty or forty, you better look the other way. So um, CRI of one hundred is the best. Let's see what else can I talk to you about. Um, in the future episodes, I'll talk about hard light, soft light. That is such a big thing in the placement of your of your lighting and diffusion of lighting. Also, we'll talk about distance. Distance is so huge in lighting, and I think people people underestimate the way that light travels and what it does. Um, so we'll talk about. I can talk about that forever, but. Um, I'll show you guys some examples. So if, like I said, if nothing else, look for a light bulb that has um, those features. I'll put that in a description down below and also give you a link to the light bulbs that I've been using and I really, really, really like them. And now that we're losing daylight with the time change uh, coming up, I'm gonna be taking out my studio lights once again and setting up uh, my area because I'll, you know, I take pictures during the week after five, between five and eight, um, and only during the weekends I will have some daylight. So we'll talk about that more in upcoming videos. Okay, greetings and salutations. Thank you for watching. Um, if you like more, uh, if you like more of these types of videos, press the like button. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. Uh, help me get motivated to more make more videos. I sure want to, but I'm like, um. So help me out if you can by telling me something that'll motivate me. Give me a quote of inspiration. That would be very helpful. And if you're wondering what that all is on my skin, I'm working, I'm volunteering at Fat Kitty City Sanctuary. I'll tell you guys more about that some other time. And I'm in love with, they have like 300 cats. It's heaven. I'll talk to you guys about more about that in the future. But yeah, that's it. I'm like a crazy cat lady and even more crazy now. Ciao, greetings and salutations. Bye.